Hello YouTube world. Today I'm going to do a line of trees. I have something very specific in my mind and thank you so much for all your lovely comments on the paintings that I did uh, last week. There were three contemporary paintings um, based on an artist called Undervisor. Not based on his work but I drew inspiration from his trees and a set of more traditional ones. So I'm kind of going down the route, <coughs> excuse me, of the contemporary ones. I have a picture in my head, which I'm going to work really hard at getting down on canvas. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> So I'm going to put one drop of silicone, this is from Jackson's, um, in not all of the colours. I'm going to put it in the orange, I'm going to put it in this magenta, dark magenta, not the yellow. I'm going to put it in the two greens and that be it. Yellow is a bit fierce so it can take over. So I'm a bit brave putting it in so many colours. This is a 10 by 12 canvas. I have some very pale blue here um, that I've mixed up myself with a pale blue from Hobbycraft and I've added it's complementary orange so only ever slightly just to knock it back because I want I don't even know if I want a sky I'm half thinking about just doing white but we'll see how this goes I can always change it can't I right so I'm just swapping to a voice over here because I, I want to point out that it, it doesn't always work out first time for us that are on YouTube we don't always show the, the real failures, but this was just a real failure. And, and the thing to do is just to pick yourself up and do it again. <laughs> I use far too much paint in my little flip cup here. And, and it wasn't what I wanted to do at all. And I knew it right at this point, I'm thinking, you know, this is not what I had in my mind. So, to encourage you out there that, that say, you know, we're accomplished artists and things like that. <laughs> sometimes we just get it wrong. Sometimes it just doesn't go right. And sometimes we, we have to do it again as well. And right now, looking at this, I'm thinking, God, I just want to give up. Lovely cells, but they go bonkers. Way too much paint. And I want a bonkers look. I do want a bonkers look. But um, it wasn't what I was after. So we'll try again. So I'm not going to lie. I scraped that painting. Um, it just carried on going um, a little bit too crazy. So I'm going to do it again. So it's the next day. Hello. <laughs> um, I get my colour wheel out. So let's just do a very, very quick uh, refresh on desaturating colours because just a little bit too saturated for me, all of these. Now, to desaturate my colours, I uh, get my colour wheel and I will add a tiny, tiny bit of the opposite colour on the colour wheel, i.e. the complementary colour, until I'm happy that it's the right kind of hue that I want. And you notice that I add a very little bit of green and add a little bit of orange to the green. It's that simple. And I'll do that with all my colours, um, apart from the gold, and I do do it with the yellow actually, because um, it was just too bright and too vivid for me. And not quite autumnal actually. Yeah, 
so I must confess about a bad couple of days after that last pour um, I, I was ready to chuck it in for something so basic <laughs> it just didn't work out and um, and I'm leaving it in because I've all, I'm all about transparency and if it encourages somebody out there to carry on then I hope it does because we do, as I said before we don't always get it right that's a much better colour for me not so bright not so vivid okay I have white this is just plain old Amsterdam white it's not house paint I have left over x4 silver that's that warm silver far too thick so that needs watering down um and i have a mix of blue which has been desaturated with um orange um that's just left leftover paint actually dumped in there so I'm going to use those three colours as my base. I'm thinking. So I'm just going to go with white for over half of the canvas. And I'm going to do a flip cup for the sky. Now my paint is very thin. It's not ideal for a flip cup and it's not even ideal for using silicone. Um, but sometimes you mix up your paints, you've got to use them, you, you, you can't just dump them. And I make the mistake there of putting some old folk art silver in there, which was, which was thicker than the rest. Ricky, Ricky mistake. I never learn. Um, but we just look at these reactions, watch. Oh, that was without any silicone. It's just thin paint, paint densities. But I didn't really want a crazy sky like that, so I kind of work on um, blending that. I also had a lot of um, thick bits. I don't know where they came from. So I go about now just adding small amounts of paint, stirring um, before using. And it looks like I'm just flinging it at, but I'm start, I, at the canvas, but I'm, just, I'm starting the lighter colours at the top working towards the, the bottom and I still drain a lot of the colour off. And just watch torching. This also, I, I end up with quite a few craters in the sky, and there's no silicon there at all. So I think it was just the reaction of using some really old paint. But anyway, here we go again. And I'm trying really hard to be a lot more intuitive with my painting. I really admire Natalie from Traveller Paints. I, I watch her and I just, I, I am in awe of what she creates. And she keeps going until she is happy with what she has. And she is completely free and completely intuitive. And you get a wonderfully painterly effect. And as an artist, I can really appreciate what she does. So I'm using less paint. I've created a little bit of a sky which needs knocking back and a little bit of foreground detail. Don't forget these paintings are uh, their backgrounds, their bases for what I'm going to do next. Um, and if these dry in time, I will work on them because it's, today's Wednesday and 
I hope to get it all uploaded for Sunday. I'm late again. But anyway, just watch what happens. Again, I drain a lot of the paint off. Just working on blending the face horizon line and the sky horizon where the clouds come down. I have lots of bubbles as well. However, they still go really crazy, but I'm going to have to work with what I have. So I'm going to go away and I'm going to be doing thing, a lot of thinking as to what I can draw over the top. I have something in mind, be very contemporary, I hope, and we'll see how these dry. What a difference. I mean, <laughs> Obviously, I'm not used to using silicone, and I can tell you that um, <laughs> my paint was way too thin, and they just kept growing and growing and growing. So, anyway, I have to work with what I've got, I have to work with what I've given, and I've just shown you some cornflower, because in order to do what I wanted to do, a picture I've got in my head, I need to take all the silicone off. And to do this, I know this is basic, but I get emails about this. Um, I stick some corn flour over the area that I've got the silicone. I use the back of a spoon to rub it in. I will go away and leave it for a while, sometimes a day. I have a coarse brush that then I just work into the painting. And I will keep doing that until the corn flour becomes you can see the difference, it becomes all kind of clumpy because it's obviously soaked in the moisture of the silicone. And then I'll get a softer brush, this is a makeup brush, and just push it around and keep uh, brushing over what I think are the uh, greasy bits. And you can see greasy bits with corn flour. Keep brushing it over and pushing it in and you'll, you'll see the difference. It's a fiddle, isn't it? This is why I don't use silicone. Um, it's okay if you've got time. Brush it off. I used then a wipe, just a, a baby wipe, a uh, dental wipe. And I do the sides first to make sure the paint's not gonna come off. And I just give it a really good clean. Now, little trick. Okay, if you're not sure how to draw over the top of a painting, you can see I'm drawing over, over um, tracing paper. And then you can see here that I've added some gold leaf. Now I haven't filmed it because it's just boring. I'm just painting glue on, waiting for the glue to dry, putting gold leaf over the top. And I use a real mixture of um, bronze and gold. Now, it just looks like nothing at the moment but don't forget i've got a picture in my head um you can just see all the pens i use so these ones are called what are they called sakura yeah sakura i'll put the links in the description uh, these are um really good this one isn't so good this is a one that you've seen me use before it smudges quite, they all smudge, so you have to be careful when you use them. This is from Japan, um, Amazon really. But you, you, have to seal, you have to seal your paintings afterwards. You cannot uh, get away with knots because you'll, it will smudge. So this is just a quite quick time lapse. And I didn't film all of this because it took me a long time. But again, I've just put in my in my trees, my really uh, contemporary graphic trees based, inspired by 
Hundervisor, the artist whom I mentioned last week. Um, and I can't say that I've got the particular picture in my head that I had because I've just worked with what I've got. And you can see all I've done is drawn, drawn around the shapes of the cells. Very therapeutic. Okay, finished results. I'm pleased with the one, I'm not so pleased with the other. That one up there, not so sure about. This one has got potential to go further. I have softened the sky, you can see there. Um, I, 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 as I said before, I very nearly gave up on these. If they're nothing, they're original. <laughs> <laughs> this one I've done quite a lot of embellishing and I don't think I've finished this one. I'm going to carry on, but I just need a break from it. I can I can see there that I, I want to do a lot more detailed work in the orange there. So maybe in the future I will show you what I've done. Thanks for watching, guys. And be kind. <laughs> These have been really difficult. <laughs>